need some spicy Time Spiral Remastered reprints, maybe some cool old border cards? Well, you can pre-order Time Spiral Remastered now from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, by heading over to CardKingdom.com. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Meme or Dream. And this week, we got a deck we're playing for one reason. It's a knight deck. It's got a sideboard that actually looks pretty reasonable. It's got a lot of the best knights in it. So why are we playing this knight deck on Meme or Dream? And there is one answer, and one answer alone. And that answer is, it's playing the Circle of Loyalty. If you're not familiar with the Circle of Loyalty, uh, on the channel, it's kind of a meme, because both me and Krim put it on our like top 10 list when it came out on Throne of Eldraine, and then it absolutely saw no play, and it was horrible. So this is the Circle of Loyalty's chance for redemption. Yes, we're probably going to win with Ember Cleaves. Yes, we're probably going to win with random two-mana, one-mana knights. But this might be the Circle of Loyalty's last chance to redeem itself, to prove our top 10 prediction right. So I'm really hoping we crush it with this deck and that Circle of Loyalty is responsible. And then I can feel a little less bad about our top 10 for Throne of Eldraine standard cards a year and a half ago. So anyway, we're knighting with Circle of Loyalty instead. Standard. Let's find out. Is it a meme or a dream? Is Circle of Loyalty in specific a meme or a dream? Let's play some games. All right. On to round one with the Circle of Loyalty. And uh looks like we're on the draw. <laughs> Pony, opponent's pet going off over there already. Exploding. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, well... No circle of loyalty. We do have some knights. And an ember cleave, which is always busted. We'll keep this. I mean, the one thing I don't like about this deck, and I guess I should move myself to a to a different a different place so I'm not over the stack and whatnot. Right, let's go. Maybe I should go up here. I, it seems like everyone puts themselves here. Maybe that's the perfect position for putting oneself. <laughs> but I feel like I'm just hovering in the middle of the screen, which is a lot. Okay, we'll we'll go back down to the usual. Let's go let's go back to the corner. Uh, Fervent Champion's a pretty good draw. Fervent Champion means we get to do something on turn one. Opponent's playing Loris. And they're a black deck. Huh. Could be some sort of, like... I don't know. Oh my god, it's Rogues. Of course. Of course the Basic Swamp threw me off, but it's Rogues. Well, we'll see. The good news is we're pretty aggressive. And being pretty aggressive is not a bad place to be against rogues. Opponent, thinking about attacking. I mean, you're not going to block anyway. Um, hmm. I'll go to combat. Attack you. Abunant takes it. Um, pathway on red and worthy knight. No counters, please. All right, counter number one, drown in the lock. So we gotta try to be aggressive and kill our opponent quickly because our opponent has draw fours and we do not. Opponent tap land goes attacking. Uh, well, we will play a pathway on. Actually, let's just hmm. let's play inspiring veteran. Come on, tell me you don't have even more counters, opponent. As in scatter, of course they do. Uh, I mean it is rogues. They always have. Like, ten counters plus another ten or something. There's so many. Opponent. Blaze a Swamp. This is a matchup where play draw is insanely huge. Uh, I think if we're on the play, this matchup goes way, way different than if we're on the draw. Play this on, uh, I guess, white. Awkwardly, this tournament grounds does not allow us to cast our Circle of Loyalty. I'll go to combat. Attack. Soaring Thought Thief. Let's see if our opponent has counter 20. Mills to lands. Well, all right. Black lands Paragon. Death touch you. Out of here, Soaring Thought Thief. Nice try. And then... Ugh. Yeah, we'll just run out Smitten Swordmaster. All right, opponent. You are go. We're coming for you. And we got to cleave. Circle Loyalty's down to three mana, but we can't cast it, unfortunately. Opponent passing. Red mana. Well, play it. 
go attacking. Pump Paragon. About it. Well, we will Ember Cleave. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Alright! Well, we said they had 10 plus 10, and our opponent's getting there. Counter number 40, it's Allurus. Well, hilariously, we need to draw a white source for the Circle of Loyalty. We do not. Uh, yeah, I mean, and now I, I think that's just game now, unfortunately. Wow. Oh, meh. Draw a bunch of cards. Sure. Cracks it. Oh, if only we won the die roll. It's really amazing how much the die roll plays into some matchups. In some matchups, it's not that big of a deal. In other matchups, it is the deal. In this matchup, uh, in this game, if we had played first and had two things on the battlefield before our opponent could start countering, our opponent uh, pretty much just auto loses. But good news is we get to be on the play for game number two, which is something. Opponent does some milling, goes attacking, hits us. Well, we get to draw an extra card. I guess we both do Fervent Champion, and well, there's white mana. So play that. Play Fervent Champion. Play Circle of Loyalty. Do we have counter 40? It is rogues. Come on. Come on, Circle of Loyalty. This is your chance. Oh, come on now. All right, so opponent has counter 40. Well, we will go attack egg. We will pump and pump. Opponent blocks. Drops to seven. Temporarily loses their dork. Oh, circle of loyalty would have been so helpful. Thieves Gold Enforcer, it's back. Companion cards actually seem pretty good, don't they? Opponent goes attacking. Mills some stuff. Gains back some life, unfortunately. Plays a Ruin Grab. Well, draw some cards. Bad land. Even worse land. Well, cycle bad land number one. Venerable Knight. Not super helpful, but we will play it. And... Yeah, I mean, we can't... Attacking isn't doing anything. Like, that's the whole problem with this. Like, our opponent just can recast everything because of this Lurus. We really needed that Circle of Loyalty. Opponent going to block. Drops to seven. Well, uh, we will pass the turn. About it. Draws a guard. Circle of Loyalty would have made a difference here. It didn't get to make a difference because our opponent had literally 14 counters, but if our opponent only had 13 counters and we stuck the Circle of Loyalty, we would have had him. Wow, interesting choice. Well, we will block the Lurus. I'm guessing our opponent has reanimation must be, or else they wouldn't be doing this. Um, well, grow the Crusader. Let's see, our opponent must have reanimation. We're also down to 22 cards, which uh, is not great. Reanimates Loris. Well, draw some extra cards. Inspiring Veteran. Go to combat. Um, hmm. Attack, attack. Pump each other. About it. Blocks. Drops to six. I don't play the land past the turn. Opponent. Oh, 22 cards. Ruin Crab returns. Land. Mills for six. About it. Of one mine. Draws a bunch of cards. 
and Ruin Crab Park 20. Yeah, we're just going to get milled out, I think. We needed the circle of loyalty. I mean, we're not going to... I don't think we're going to win this game. However, it does show the power of circle of loyalty if we had drawn it. Oh, well, I mean, play Blacklands Paragon. I'm sure our opponent has uh, more counters or removal, even if we do find, like, Embercleave. Bad land. Not great night. Cycle. Wow. Well, all right. Circle of loyalty. We found a both. Does our opponent have counter number 15? They do not. I'll go to combat. Attack with everything. We will pump and pump. All right. All right, opponent, please die. Please die to the circle of loyalty. Thieves Guild Enforcer. Part uh, several. Mills and mills. Yeah, so I think our opponent can just mass chump block and, uh, and win here by making a land drop. Yeah, going to cash in the Lurus. Going to block. Going to block. Going to block. Going to block. Gonna block. Well. Alright, so we kill literally everything on our opponent's board. Opponent has just a Soaring Thought Thief. They go up to eight. We pass the turn. Would I have another one in hand? Five cards of the library. This is going to eat two. Land. I mean, if our opponent can't mill these last cards, there's hope. About it. Attacks. Mills two. Hits us. Well, Flaglands Paragon. Oh! The Circle of Loyalty! The Circle of Loyalty! It did it! It came through! <laughs> Ah, oh, a boat encountered so many of our things. But in the end, it was that buff from the Circle of Loyalty that gave us enough damage to get in for lethal. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Circle of Loyalty. Real magic card. Real magic card. It's doing it. <laughs> All right, let's bring in some fire prof. Well, actually, maybe we just want Scorching Dragon Fire. Exiling seems relevant. We'll go down a couple of uh, Rhyme Rock Knights. Doesn't seem like the best rapper matchup. Uh, all right. Let's uh, let's try that. Well, score one for Circle of Loyalty. That was actually really sweet. Eh, all right. We'll try this. We got the Circle of Loyalty. How bad can it be? Uh, tap land go. Thieves Guild Enforcer. About it. Uh hmm. Well, play a land storm Fisk crusader. All right, counter one of forty. About it. Tap land goes attacking. Now play the land on. Oh, that's awkward. Playing on white. Smitten Swordmaster. Oh my god. Counter two of 40. Well, Affirmant Champion. No attacks. Opponent plays a land. Cracks it. 
gets a swamp. Of one mind to draw a couple of cards. Opponent passes. Well, inspiring veteran. Go attacking. Almost. Almost to the circle of loyalty. About it. Adepts. Many cards in hand. How good are they? Ruin Crab. Ruin Crab again. Passes. Well, go to combat. Attack. Pump. Blocks and blocks. We will Blacklands Paragon. The Fervent Champion. Kill your stuff. Curry favor. Drain ya. The pressure's on, and we're holding on to an answer to this Luris. All opponent's got is a Ruin Crab. About it. A little bit behind the night curve, and... If they tap down to get the Luris, <laughs> the best card from Throne of Eldorade. Oh, they didn't. All right. Well, in that case, play this on red. Inspiring Veteran. Go to combat. Done. Done, done, done. Circle of Loyalty Power. Okay. That was pretty good. That was very good. Not only did we win. But we beat Rogues, which is always a, a heartache to play against. And Circle of Loyalty was relevant. Put them all together. Uh, all right. Well, this time we're on the other end of the spectrum, up against Yarion. Although being aggressive can be good against Yarion. Hmm. Awkward mana, though. I don't play this on white. Get down, Venerable Knight. Good old Pathways. <laughs> Making it hard to cast your spell since 2020. Opponent, Maze Mind's Dome. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's just uh, try him. Um, make it so our mana will function in the future. Hedge you ever two. Could have played a Black Source and Smitten Swordmaster, but there's a value to keeping it around. Um, well, go to combat, uh, attack you. Well, step one, circle of loyalty. We're getting closer about it. If our opponent kills it, we'll flash in. Oh, they're going to trade? All right, sure. about it all right well run in black lance paragon might as well get a counter and it also gains us life and the counter means we don't get heartless acted which is nice um pathway on i don't think it really matters black go about its scries. Huh. The question is going to be, does our opponent have Wraths? I think that's the biggest question. Opponent plays a land. Uh, go to combat. Uh, attack you. Holy sharks. All right. So opponent has all the shark typhoons. That's for sure. Opponent blocks with the shark. That's not great for us. Uh, well, play this. Crack it. Get a red source. Uh, we'll see if they also have a wrath. That would be very bad. Uh, grab a mountain. Stormfist Crusader. Smitten Swordmaster. Go. Oh, all right. No Shadows Verdicts. No Shadows Verdicts. No Extinction Events. Just die like a good Yarion opponent. <laughs> Let us play our circle of loyalty. Don't worry about it. That's going to be a shadow's verdict. Oh, 
Well, now we're seeing the drawback of Circle of Loyalty that if our opponent can wrath our board, it's so expensive. Ooh, not wrathing our board? Okay, that we like. Draw a card, opponent gets to draw a card, we draw another card. Uh, well, Fervent Champion. Oh. Circle of Loyalty. No counter it. No counter it. No counter it, please. This is the whole point. This is the whole point of our deck. Oh, shit's not coming. Well, I mean, I guess the good news is we do get to smack our opponent for a bunch. Opponent's gonna draw a card. However, they take a beating. We will play this on white past the turn. Well, did you find our sweeper? Yes. That's bad. Wow. We got our circle of loyalty countered, and they drew into the shadows verdict. That feels like cheating. Feels like cheating to me. Well, inspiring veteran. Tournament grounds go. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. The problem is our opponent is very close to Salte Ultimatum, uh, Emergent Ultimatum, and then once our opponent Emergent Ultimatums, they win. It is a one card, a one card combo, is what we like to call it in the biz. Uh, go to combat, hit you. Embercleave, get blown out, scoop. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, and we will do the the right thing and uh, go on to the next game. I know we're at 24 life. I know that looks like an early scoop. There is no way we win that game. <laughs> there is no way. I know you can probably try to construct some scenario in your head where we would, but no. It's just, it's, in all honesty, it's not happening. It is not actually happening. Uh, all right, bring in some village rights so we can sack stuff in response to removal. And try again. Uh, boot it. Yeah, when you play against a control deck, winning the game isn't getting your life total to zero, it's taking control of the game. Probably the the best example of this, I would say, would be... Those hands got a lot of circle of loyalties. Um, the best example of that is probably some Teferi control decks from a couple of years ago with Teferi Hero of Dominaria, where they don't ever actually kill you. I guess they eventually mill you out. But once they get to the position where they are firmly in control of the game, uh, there's no way you're going to actually win the game. So the thing you should do is just concede and uh, enjoy an extra half hour of your life by going on to another game of Magic rather than bashing your head into the wall <laughs> in an unwinnable situation. Well, Worthy Note would be sweet if it lived. I'd be surprised if it did. But if... All right, removal spell one. Oh, boot it plays a land. Well, one thing I have noticed about this deck is the mana base is not great, which is awkward. Oh, boot it plays a land passes. I'll go to combat. Like, we currently cannot cast this village rights, which is incredibly awkward. This tournament grounds is, like, Really, really awkward. Opponent scries two to the top. Ah, that is exactly the direction we are hoping not to see. All right, nice little tap land for our aggro deck. Go attacking. The village raid right sideboard plan does not do a whole lot if you cannot cast village raids. Today we learned. Like, our opponent can wrath our board here, and we can't do anything about it, because we can't we can't cast those village rights. Yeah? That is real awkward. I'll play this thing. Huh. Opponent going to scry. Yeah, I don't think we got off to a fast enough start. I think uh, for us to actually beat... I mean, maybe we should have mulliganed away the Circle of Loyalties, but we're here because of Circle of Loyalties, so I don't think we can actually mulligan it away. 
opponent going to draw a card and pass and draw more cards whoa 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 that is a land that adds mana to cast our spells <laughs> what what is happening i don't know that feeling that's a new one we've never experienced that before usually our lands only cast <laughs> not circle of loyalties not village rights uh all right bone it going to heartless act ha ha got him <laughs> would have been nice if we could have done that several too many turns ago but hey we'll draw two and we can draw two more lands that can cast spells i am overwhelmed with joy <laughs> starfish crusader venerable knight go Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, that means one more land is... Oh, come on now. That means one more land and our opponent uh, can win the game. Land. Omen of the Sea. Sure, 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 sure. One to the top this time. And... Oh, boot it. Has a Yarian in hand. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Well, refuels. It's a little bit disappointing, because I assume that knights should be decent in this matchup, but maybe without having the protection that decks like Mono White Aggro have, maybe it's not actually good in this matchup. Um, all right. Circle of loyalty. Look out, opponent. Venerable Knight is now at 3-2. Whatever will you do? <laughs> oh, they should have the ultimatum by now. They just got to see a huge chunk of their deck. Temple of Disease cries to the bottom. Omen of the Sea, part 40, to the bottom. And about it. Maze Mind's Tome passes. I don't play Worthy Knight. Play Fervent Champion. Still can't attack. Play. I mean, I guess all we can do is just run out our hand and hope that our opponent doesn't have a Wrath, doesn't have Emerging Ultimatum. I mean, this is it. This is what we got. If our opponent can find an answer, then then they got us. They also get to gain four with this Maze Mind Stone. Yeah. Scries. I mean, opponents scried a lot of cards to the bottom. So they are going to find the ultimatum. And once they do, that, uh, that does it. Or a sweeper. Blood Chief Sirs the Worthy Knight. Well, that means they don't have a sweeper. Elspeth's Nightmare. So no sweeper, but a lot of removal spells. Opponent passes. More lands. We'll play this on red. Go to combat. Attack. I mean, we're going to try to Ember Cleave. I expect that this is probably not going to go to plan, but uh, Ember Cleave. Make a Knight. About it. As a counter. Well, all right. Uh, circle loyalty. Mega Knight. We're going to lose it to Auspice Nightmare, so. Oh, wonderful. All right. Opponent. <laughs> Learning some legendary legend rule lessons. I mean, I don't think it's going to matter. I think. Uh, we're probably still about to get a merge ultimatum, but uh, we got that counter off our opponent's hand for free. <laughs> we were going to legend rule ourselves with circle of loyalties. Opponent, drawing a guard. Shadow's verdict. Yeah, well, we gave it the old college try. Play Rhyme Rock Knight. 
Pass the turn. I mean, I guess in some sense, the circle of loyalty is temporarily keeping us in this game. The problem is we're to the late game, though, and our opponent's gaining tons of life. They're drawing tons of cards, and they have an I-win combo that they will find eventually. So the fact that we're in the late game is really bad news for our deck. Binding of the Old Gods. Yeah, I mean, we're getting very, very close to to uh, calling it now. The one, uh, our Circle of Loyalty, the one card that was kind to keep us in the game is now also gone. Opponents all the way back up to 13. We know they have a draw three plus removal spell with this Yarion at any point. Opponent gets a land out of their deck. Plays a land, goes attacking. Yarion, yeah. All right, well. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, well, that didn't go as well as I was hoping. I honestly thought that aggro would probably be decent against the Yarion deck, but Knights might be too slow of an aggro deck, as weird as that sounds, to actually be good against Salta Yarion. It doesn't have quite the... I mean, I guess you have Embercleave. Embercleave can be a good way to close out games, but we are not able to resolve it, and our opponent had a lot of sweepers and a lot of card draw. It does make me question, though, because I don't think I ever lost to... Like, almost never lost to Yarian playing Mono White. So I was hoping that this deck would be similar, but apparently not. I don't think it was Circle of Loyalty's fault, though. Circle of Loyalty was the one card that was, like, kind of keeping us in the game. Uh, well, play this on red. Fervent Champion. Go attacking. Opponent. It's a little bit land-heavy, but we have an Ember Cleave. No Circle of Loyalty. What are you up to, opponent? Island. Oh, well, there's a Circle of Loyalty. Well, play the land. Worthy Knight. Go attacking. Opponent. More knights would be nice to trigger Worthy Knight. We've had a lot of hands where we draw a bunch of these expensive Eldrain cards, which are really powerful, but if your opponent has a bunch of sweepers, have a tendency to get stuck in your hand, which is awkward. Opponent, probably some, some type of control deck. Hopefully it's a control deck that's holding a bunch of counter spells that don't do much. Wow. Is Worthy Knight enough? <laughs> opponent just gives up on on the match once they see a Worthy Knight. All right. Opponent, after much thought, plays a Scry Land. Wow, they're doing their best to time out here uh, playing a single Temple of Deceit. All right. Woo! All right. We'll play a Trio. Go attacking. Headshot. Your turn, opponent. Oh, dear. Is our opponent going to do this every turn? One thing I realized is because we like to talk on Meme or Dream about how some of these decks could get six wins in a row. I have a theory, and I don't recommend you trying out this theory, but I wonder if you could get six wins in a row just by playing frustratingly slowly and running into players who do not want to sit through it. I almost think that that could be a way that you could, like, if you just rope every turn like our opponent is, that, if I'm not recording, that makes me want to just scoop, the, it makes me want to just continue the game right now and go on to the next one, because it's a ladder, so what does it matter? I wonder if, okay, opponent... eventually decides that they will cast a removal spell, which I mean, I guess that is probably a reasonable choice. We will attack. So, so far we have used 54 seconds. Our opponent is 2 minutes and 30... Uh, 24, 25. I wonder if that's an actual technique that people use, though. Uh, boot it. Carefully surveying the battlefield as laid out before them. Here comes the clock. 
And, oh, down to the buzzer. Are they gonna make an action? Are they gonna make an action? No. Well, we will play Blackland's Paragon. I mean, the other possibility is our opponents uh, maybe having internet problems or something. Well, I guess it's circle loyalty time. Opponent. If they don't make an action here and their head explodes as a result, that counts as a circle loyalty win. And a justification for having it on the top 10 list. It does count. <laughs> Let me make that very clear. <laughs> With circle of loyalty, we'll take it however we get it. If it's our opponent timing out, I mean, it's a circle of loyalty win. Maybe it is the best card for Baldurade. Everyone's been too caught up on the Ember Cleaves and the Great Henges, but maybe circle of loyalty is the, the broken card all along. And just no one's realized it yet. <laughs> Hedgea, down to six. I don't even know if we want to play this Triome. No, yeah, it's not. Oh, whoa, okay. Huh. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. Uh, I have literally no idea what's going on. None. But, uh, Circle of Loyalty, winning the game. It was on the battlefield when our opponent's head exploded. That counts. <laughs> oh, don't, don't try to take it away from me and my Circle of Loyalty. <laughs> we have a lot riding on this. Um... <laughs> Let's. Huh. What are we cutting? Let's go down a couple black lances. I think we mostly want to remain aggressive. Is four Ember Cleaves too many? I never play Ember Cleave deck, so. It seems like a lot, but it also seems busted, so. Uh, it also is busted. It doesn't seem busted. Uh, Alright, let's go down. Alright, two Rhyme Rocks. All right, on to game two. Well, we're gonna keep this. One land that cannot cast several of our spells is awkward, but double Fervent Hambian is sweet. If we draw land, it's even sweeter. Hmm. All right, let's start with the Triome, awkwardly. Start with the Triome, next turn we could potentially double Fervent Champion. And I think that ends up being the same amount of damage anyway. I'll play Tournament Grounds. Fervent Champion. Fervent Champion. Smack you for four down to 16. Pass the turn. So we do want to try to leave up this village rights if... Wow, so many tap lands. We do want to try to leave up this village rights if possible. Because at least it's a tiny bit of protection for like a sweeper, but. Ember Cleave. Uh, play this on. I guess it's got to be white for Circle of Loyalty. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, this is a pathway that doesn't make white. Uh, then black? Inspiring Veteran? Go tagging. Hit you for six. This is the kind of start we needed against the Yari on deck. Oh, booted. All right, well, village rights value. Draw a couple cards. Does mean our opponent's only taking four, but... Down to 12. Can we get down the circle of loyalty? Opponent plays cracks. That eh, seems like a sign they want to do something. About it. Opponents played a lot faster in game two. I don't know what was going on in game one. <laughs> Hopefully this is not a wrath. Oh wait, just kidding. 
I take it back. I tried to compliment you about it. And now we're back on the rope. About it. Are they just giving up again? Oh, timeout used. Wait, didn't they have zero timeouts? How did they have a timeout to use? I'm pretty sure that number was at zero the whole time. But maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> well, at least don't don't head explode yet, so we can untap and get a circle of loyalty win. Really? Wow. Our opponent's doing this on purpose, aren't they? I am having a very difficult time believing that our opponent is not intentionally intentionally roping because they ran down their entire clock the entire time that turn for no reason only to have this Kravik that they could have played the entire time and then he's, the next turn they're back to playing at a normal pace huh I think some people really truly do try to get wins by frustrating their opponent with their pace of play uh, so question I mean we have no idea maybe our opponent's still having internet issues do you consider that a legitimate <laughs> a legitimate play pattern completely disregarding our opponent let's say our opponent uh, is just having internet issues is it fair Gabe to try to get up <laughs> pick up wins by roping consistently to frustrate your opponents or would you consider that to be across the line uh, on arena Opponent. That was definitely a blowout. We have to take a nap here in between our opponent's turns. Back on the clock. <laughs> well, now we can't scoop and give our opponent the win <laughs> as a reward for uh, roping every turn. All right, so opponent runs out of clock, doesn't have any timeouts left. We will get a mountain, we will untap, we'll play this pathway on white, we will play circle of loyalty. We will, opponent doesn't care, or is, they're highlighting, so I, I am so befuddled by what's happening at the moment. Opponent gonna charge up their midnight clock and charge up their midnight clock. Goes attacking. Okay. Down to eleven. All 
midnight clock, blah, blah, blah. But it's going to draw seven. We draw more lands, which isn't helpful. We will pass the turn. Opponent drawing seven isn't great. Charges up the midnight clock. Okay, so opponent definitely has a counter. Opponent plays a Crawling Barons. Well, we will Emberclave. Opponent. That will block. Wow. Okay, that just works somehow. Well, that's good news. Karavik was definitely giving us a hard time. We have a lot of a lot of one toughness stuff in our deck. I guess Circle of Loyalty helps to some extent. Well, see if our bone got an answer. Okay, Blood Chief's thirst. Midnight clock. So next turn our opponent's gonna draw. Well, play Worthy Knight. play a pathway on black smith and sword master well let's see if we can beat our opponent's new hand that is the the real concern that opponent gets to draw seven thanks to this midnight clock Okay, Crawling Barons, doing Crawling Barons-y things. About it. So, ends up, what, plus four cards? Boy, that Kravik was huge for our opponent. Circle of Loyalty is doing work, though. Like, that is a repeatable source of creatures, which is super helpful. Opponent, Temple of Deceit. To the bottom. Extinction Event. On evens. Opponent made the correct choice. Well, we will make a knight, untap, equip Ember Cleave, hit you for eight, pass the turd, about it. I mean, that circle of loyalty, giving us knights that survive the wraths, maze mines tome. Opponent needs more than that, though. There's another... Cir Is Circle of Loyalty going to win this game? It might. It might actually be winning us this game. Because we have another Ember Cleave. Which can potentially get us around a removal spell or a block. Oh, wait, wait. Don't want to rush it. <laughs> uh, booted.
Somehow managed to gain a timeout in between all this and then use it again. If this is a blowout at the end of the clock again, <laughs> I swear our opponent's doing it to us on purpose. <laughs> We're not going to scoop opponent. It's not going to work with us. We have a circle of loyalty. We're sticking this out to the end. <laughs> I mean, if our opponent times out here. All right. So opponent uses their timeouts. We make a knight. We untap. We go to combat. We attack. And opponent concedes. <laughs> circle of loyalty. Wow, that was a weirdly paced game. But it was a circle of loyalty win, and that's what really counts. Broke it. We broke it. Two and one. It might be it might be a dream. It might be a dream. Sweet. Alright. <laughs> More circle of loyalty. -ing. Can we finish with a winning record? We've actually had multiple. Oh, yeah, we cannot keep that. We've actually had multiple circle of loyalty wins, which is pretty sweet. Hmm. Uh, all right, we'll keep this. Put. So we're gonna need double white if we draw circle of loyalty. Black. Oh my god. All right. Uh, we'll put we'll put this to the bottom. All right, that's fine. Trio. Go. What are you up to, opponent? Stormfist Crusader is a pretty sweet card. And get the Triome. Well, uh, let's just Worthy Knight. Star, building a board. No removal, no wrath, please. Knights are a tribe that feels close to, wow, four colors. And Bone Crusher Giant, of course. Every everyone's got a bone crusher giant. <laughs> oh, kind of amazing how impactful bone crusher giant has ended up being. Like, it's obviously a good card, but dream. Ooh, spice, eh? Oh, let's draw some lands and some ember cleaves. Well, stormfish crusader, land on red, I guess. Hit ya. Oh, dream devourer is a card that scares me. I'm very scared of Dream Devourer. We have done some busted things with Dream Devourer. Land. Oh, is this like similar to our Jun deck? Fortel, Fortel. No blocks. We'll take it. Well, let's draw some cards. Worthy Knight. Triome. Venerable Knight. Well. Hmm. We're gonna need what four for this? Well, go to combat, attack. I'll drain you. Down to seven. Pathway on white. Venerable knight. Ooh, no wrath. No wrath. No combos. Nothing like that. Just, just die, please. <laughs> Nothing, nothing personal. <laughs> nothing personal. We just want to kill you with an Ember Cleave. Uh, gold, ooh, two mana, three mana dra Gold Span Dragon. Which I guess means it's technically free if you use a treasure. That's spicy. About it. Can they even attack, or do they have to stay on defense? I guess they can attack if they have removals. Wow, stand back. Well, getting to keep triggering these Stormfish Crusaders is... Oh, wow, Okay. Well, now we might just win. Hasty creature. Swamp. Opponents at... F oh, now we definitely just win. Uh, Worthy Knight. We don't even have to attack. Worthy Knight. Fervent Champion. Spent Swordmaster. <laughs> and game. Okay. No circle of loyalty, but that was pretty impressive. Uh, the bad news is I have no idea what our opponent's deck's about. N literally none. <laughs> Jund Ramp? Maybe? I, I don't know. We saw Bone Crushers. They probably have Sweepers. Do we? You know what? Let's run it back. Let's run it back. Trust that we find our Circle of Loyalty. Trust that that's enough to win us the game. All right. 
On to game number two. Knights versus, oh my god, Ember Cleave Tron. Is Ember Cleave Tron a good enough Tron? Hmm. I'm assuming you don't want three Ember Cleaves in hand. I, have we ever played an Ember Cleave deck? I honestly don't know if we've ever played an Ember Cleave deck. I'm sure we have, but I cannot think of one. It's not a. Is this a hand you can keep? One drop? Two drop. That makes it four mana. So if we draw another creature, we. Eh, all right, yeah, sure. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, let's keep it. <laughs> don't kill our stuff. Let us cleave you. Well, Rhyme Rock Knight is another creature. Venerable Knight. No. Opponent. Oh, it's an adventure. Okay. Spicy Adventures. Jund Adventures. I don't know if that counts as spicy, but you know what I'm saying. I'm kind of, I'm kind of over the, uh, I guess we put this on red. I'm kind of over the, <laughs> I, I'm an adventure deck, but I play a couple of different cards. Uh, so it's a sweet brew technique. That seems to be where a lot of the quote unquote brews have come up in uh, standard recently. Like, hey, it's kind of basically just the same thing. But, <laughs> but, however, I have a Dream Devourer. <laughs> I might be bone crushing and love Stark Beasting and Edge while innkeepering you, but, Dream Devourer. <laughs> but, showdown of the Scalds. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me, it's different. Don't kill ours. Oh, there's an innkeeper. Yeah. And a love struck beast, and a card being drawn. Well, we can't play our circle of loyalty yet. This tournament grounds has been very awkward with with a circle of loyalty in specific. Opponent passes. Well, go tagging. Believe in the believe in the cleave. Opponent blocks. And also blocks. Hmm. No, well, Emberclave. On Paragon. Kill some things. Lose some things. Grow our Dwarven Rapper, Rhyme Rock Knight, opponent. Yeah, down to 15. Rhyme Rock, it's like, that's like Limp Biscuit or something, right? Opponent. <laughs> Love Struck Beast. <laughs> oh, it says. Oh my god. Well, we didn't necessarily want Ember Cleave number four. Opponent gonna chump. Down to six. That is a lot of Ember Cleaves. Down to 11. Land. Come on. <laughs> Hold. Opponent hits us. Down to nine. Do they have removal? If they do, this gets pretty bad. I'll go to combat. Attack you. Poison the cup? Interesting. I have not seen that removal spell, like, at all. Two to the top. Uh-oh. Well. Stormfist Crusader. Oh, we might be in trouble now. Four Ember Cleaves is too bad. Oh, we're going to get Bode Crush. Oh. We can't even say we're getting Eldrain because we have four, <laughs> four Ember Cleaves in hand, but we are getting Eldrain. Yeah, I mean, we're. I guess we'll play out the last couple turns, but we are dead now. Down to seven, down to five. There's a Bone Crusher. I mean, we're just, like, literally dead now. There's not. Not a draw that could save us from having four Ember Cleaves. One draws a card. Sure. Well, 
out? Looks like our opponent's gonna win the Eldraine Mirror. Duress. We're not gonna show Circle of Loyalty. You can take one of our Embercleaves, but you will not take our Circle of Loyalty. <laughs> the best Eldraine card in the history of a... Uh... Huh. Opponent's deck is a lot different than it looked. I think we will... Maybe go down to Embercleave. Drawing four of them did not feel great. Go down to Embercleave. Go down one Rhyme Rock, one Black Lance. Run it like that. We're on the play. Get a little removal for the Edge Wallet Keepers and see what happens. All right. We get to play first. Uh, that's a good hand, but not enough lands to do anything with it. All right, this is fine. No white mana. Hmm. I guess we put a swamp to the bottom? All right, swamp to the bottom. Boom, boom. Here comes the fervent champion. Sounds a ways away from really doing much, but... Uh, booted. Forest, and... Edgewall Ingiba. Oh, play this on black. Go attacking. Hit ya. Smitten Swordmaster. Gonna wait on the Fire Prophecy. They shouldn't be able to adventure this turn anyway. They're probably gonna be bone crushing one of our things. Forest? Ooh, or not. Ugh, second Innkeeper. And the Love Strike Beast Dork. Ooh. Yeah. Well, there's white mana. Go to combat. Attack, attack. About it. Blocks. Goes to 17. We gain some life. Venerable Knight. Kill an innkeeper. Loot into a worthy knight. Whoo! Adventure cards are so strong. About it. Land. 5-5. Five, five. Draws a card. I feel like our opponent's deck does a lot of what our deck does, except they also get to draw cards as they do it. Remember when Lucky Clover used to be legal? Oh my god. Oh, binding. Sure. Don't add us. That is not mana that allows us to win the game. Or cast our Embercleave. Opponent takes it. Play it on white. Go. Yeah, the mana has been actually very clunky. Like, surprisingly clunky. How, how hard of a time we've had casting some of our, our best cards. Like the Circle of Loyalty. Opponent. Hits us to 12. Passes. More venerable knights. Well, go attacking. Hit ya. For four. Imagine this if we could also be casting. Oh my god. Oh my god, more... More adventures. Yeah, we're super dead. Well, Venerable Knight, go. Yeah, the mana has not worked out here. We need to be able to cast the Ember Cleave somewhere between several and many turns ago, I think. Pathway. Pathway problems. If these were real duels, oh my goodness, we'd be cleaving, and we'd be Circle of loyalty and maybe winning. As it is, though, we're losing to a brew <laughs> 25 good adventure cards and a couple of cards that don't usually see play uh that's cal type standard brewing <laughs> phone hits us down to seven surface crusader yeah we're just we're just locked fair enough <laughs> well okay we'll see circle loyalty gets one more shot Circle of Loyalty itself has not been bad. Knights, on the other hand, are a, 
are pretty medium tribe, I think, in power level. In some ways, it feels like playing spicy but bad mono white or mono red. <laughs> as far as, like, actually trying to just worry about winning games. Like, knights are flavorful, but it a lot of times feels like you're playing... Ugh, Yarion, two-drop tribal on the draw. We're going to mulligan this. All right, well, this will keep. Knights are spicy, but a lot of times it does feel like... Like, mono red or mono white with bad mana, essentially. Which is a uh, sort of awkward. Like mono right or mono red, except I feel like we lose to Yarian X instead of beat them because of our inconsistencies. Uh play us on white. Worthy knight. Go. Oh boot it. Back to drawing lots of Ember Cleaves. Which uh has been a tradition. Uh, opponent's plan. Tap lands for days. Skyclave Apparition. Yeah. About it. I'll play this on red. Play Storm Fist Crusader. Gotta be nice and let our opponent draw some cards. Their Yarion deck might not draw enough cards <laughs> without our Storm Fist Crusader helping them, so. <laughs> About it. Gonna get the Arion. Passes. Well, we will draw some cards. Play a land. Go to combat. Attack. Rhyme Rock Knight. Hit you a little bit. Rhyme Rock Knight. Go. Land for our imputed. Oh, sweet mother. All right. That's a blowout. That's a that's a four mana plague win there. Well, land. Uh, go. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh -huh. Yep. Think we. Think we're in trouble. I think against these decks, we got to get off to a very fast start because the thing about these Yarion piles is there's just no way that you win the late game against them. Like, and we've already basically reached the point where, like, I uh, I think we've essentially just like lost the game at this point. We'll see. I mean, if Circle of Loyalty resolves, we're gonna attack first, even though it's one less damage, to see if our opponent will tap out and kill it. Alright, well, if Circle of Loyalty resolves, there's there's some amount of hope until it gets Elspeth Conquer's death. Yeah, well, sounds about right. Uh, booted. Wow, counter and removal spell? Okay, well. <laughs> Ooh, yeah! Opponent hits us. Down to 13. Passes. Well, we, I guess we pass the turn. Well, I mean, I guess we might as well play the land. Not not doing much in hand. About it. Land. Deck also does not do very well with Flood. Unless it has access to Circle of Loyalty in specific, then it can be okay, but it uh it does not handle flooding out well at all. Cycle land number eight into a Black Lance Paragod past the turn. About it. Land combat. Well, we're gonna try to block. I don't expect this to work, but Boat it. More removal. Okay, that's we'll, we'll call that we'll call that good enough. Land number land number ten or whatever. 
Good enough. Well, bring in the village rights, which we can occasionally cast. Go down, I think, Rhyme Rock Knight? Try it like that? <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Come on, Circle of Loyalty. You can do it. This is your last chance. Probably ever. Like, if Circle of Loyalty ever wanted to redeem itself, this is probably time. All right. We get to play first. And, well, we have a thing we can sack to draw uh, more things. I guess that's a win. Triumph go. Well, Pathway on Black, Venerable Knight. You. Yeah. Okay. Up to you, Savannah Lions. <laughs> yeah, gotta take it home. Ten attacks to go. About it. All right, Lithorn Blight. Sure. All right, real card, real card. More lands. All right, tournament grounds. Hit you for one. That's the turn. Uh, booted. Castle Lockwing. Tapped. Foretells. Perhaps a Wrath. I'll play the land on black. Play Smitten Sword Master. Go attacking, hit ya. Down to 16. Well, at least if they're gonna wrath our board, we can sack stuff to draw cards, which is something. About it. Foretells. And passes. Well, land on red. Go to combat. Attack. Hit ya. Down to 12. Pass the turn. Gonna draw some cards. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, boot it. Land. Elspeth's Nightmare. Well, we will village rights. Opponent passes. Oh, well, I guess we hope they don't have a wrath. Worthy Knight. Inspiring Veteran. Make a token. Well, I mean, this is more or less it. Resolves, combat, attack. About it. Down to nine. All right, no wrath. That's it. No wrath. That's all we ask. If there's no wrath, then okay, gonna exile something. Sure. And then dress to take probably village raids. And then wrath. I guess we could have sacked the token. Tap land. And a wrath. Well, worthy knight. Venerable knight. Go. I mean, we're we're trying to rebuild. So interesting, interesting question. What if we are the same exact deck? Maybe with a slightly improved mana, but same exact deck, 
But with Showdown of the Scalds over some of these Ember Cleaves and so forth, yeah, I mean, that does it. I wonder if the, how much that would improve the deck. Like, would being the same exact deck, but with a way to rebuild after Wrath really change it? Well, how much would that improve it? So what do we learn? We ended up going two and three, which, uh, I guess that's about right. So what this felt like to me was a really clunky aggro deck. Uh, like, yes, if the mana works, and if your colors work, and everything comes together, you can definitely win games with it. Like, we saw Circle of Loyalty actually be really relevant, really good some games. Embercleave, we tend to draw, like, four of them for some reason, or three of them, which isn't great, but obviously it's a powerful card. The awkward part is... If you compare it to some of the, I would say, like, top-tier aggro decks in the format, I feel like it's just way clunkier. So, if you look at, like, Mono Red, for example, Mono Red, it's doing a lot of the same things. It's just doing it way more efficiently. It has removal to get blockers out of the way. It gets Faceless Avid, which is one of the better cards in Standard, and it has a mana base that is pure and beautiful and never going to leave you with your circle of loyalty in hand because you're a bunch of uh, a bunch of pathways that had to be on the wrong colors and a bunch of tournament grounds which can't cast your circle of loyalties and the same is mostly true of like mono white if you look at mono white the upside of mono white is it's a uh, uh, this actually isn't a companion it's in the main deck but if you look at mono white same thing you get faceless haven you get perfect mana you get a very aggressive clock you get protection to fight through those wraths that were just wrecking us so i kind of feel like knights is spicy but bad aggro for standard like can you win games with it yes do i have any doubt that this deck won six matches in a row no not really i think that if you get six good hands in a row and six good matchups in a row and your opponent doesn't have the shadows verdicts and extinction events you can definitely do it on the other hand it had a really hard time rebuilding from Rass, unless we had circle of loyalty of all things uh it's sideboard I'm going to say, I'm glad that we have a sideboard. And I am a big believer on Memer Dream. Any sideboard is better than no sideboard. Although I do kind of wonder about this uh, Village Rights Claim the Firstborn plan. I think having some removal there really makes sense. But I do wonder if maybe the Village Rights Claim the Firstborn plan, maybe those slots could be something that's good against control. Maybe duresses, uh, agonizing remorse. Because sacking a creature to draw two as our opponent rass our entire board didn't seem to be enough to let us rebuild and win. On the other hand, if we could like build our board and then and on turn three, on turn four, duress and take the wrath out of our opponent's hand. I bet we would win a lot of those matches against control decks and Yorian decks that we were losing. Uh, so I think that is something to consider with the deck. So as far as circle loyalty itself, we got to see the good and the bad of Circle of Loyalty. We got to see it actually win us games and be the one card in our deck that is actually kind of good against Rats. Like, our opponent keeps sweeping our board, killing our stuff, but we got Circle of Loyalty so we can keep rebuilding, making three threes. Eventually, those are enough to win the game. So we got to see that awesome aspect of it. On the other hand, we also got to see it kind of rotting in our hands, not being castable, or sometimes just not being, like, super-duper impactful. But I still think that it is, uh, it is pretty powerful. Uh, I think, did this change the meme that is Circle of Loyalty? I wouldn't say that, but I do think Circle of Loyalty is not that bad of a card. Although, at the same time, I think seeing it next to Embercleave kind of shows you why one of them is one of the best cards in Standard. And the other one is in our Memer Dream Night deck. And the reason is, Embercleave, it just kills people. Like, you get the cost reduction, and it just makes your opponent die, usually in one attack, maybe two attacks, and the game's just over. Circle of Loyalty, it doesn't really do that. It does generate a lot of incremental advantage over the course of, like, a bunch of turds, but it's not just going to kill your opponent. Maybe it'll kill your opponent over the course of, like, five or six turds of making three threes, being resilient to removal, but it doesn't have the explosiveness of Embercleave, and it doesn't have the explosiveness of the Great Henge either. I think that would be another comparison. Uh, the Great Henge... Uh, if we can... If we can even find it here. The Great Henge 
is a little bit more like Circle of Loyalty in that it does it technically immediately win you the game like Embercleave. However, if you untap with this and you cast a few creatures and you draw a bunch more cards, uh, that generates a lot more repeated value than Circle of Loyalty. So it kind of feels like Circle of Loyalty... It wants to be aggro, because it wants to be in the night deck, but it's just not as explosive as Embercleave. And as, like, the grindy go-long card, it's obviously restricted to knights when Embercleave just cares about creatures attacking. Great Hands just calls about creature power, and it doesn't provide as much long-term value as Great Hands. It was just, like, play a creature, draw a card. Circle Loyalty is, like, cast a legendary spell, make a creature, pay four mana, make a creature. So I think when we're reviewing Eldraine Bag, in the day probably should have known better i think we were a little overhyped for the potential of the night tribe which was really pushed and we did think and i did think was going to be really good or at least playable in standard uh as it turns out it's kind of playable quote unquote but it's definitely not breaking any formats definitely not insane so uh, sadly I guess Circle of Loyalty going to remain a meme for the time being. But that's been our meme dream for this week. <laughs> the Circle of Loyalty Nights for Standard. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.